So this is a copy of the handout that you were given and it describes the Wilcoxon signed ranks test. It's a worked example and we have used an example of a researcher who wants to investigate whether adults report verbally presented material more accurately from the right or from the left ear using what's known as dichotic listening test. So we have the table here, the main table of results here. We have your instructions on how to carry out the test here. We have a secondary table here and we have the worked example here and a table here. Right, so let's start with some basics, shall we? Right, this is directional or one-tailed hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is that there is no difference between recall accuracy between the left and right ear when tested using a dichotic listening test. This little symbol here, H0, merely denotes that this is the null hypothesis. So rather than writing null hypothesis, you could simply write H0. This is the alternative hypothesis. This is that participants will recall words more accurately pre when presented in the right ear than when presented in the left ear using a dichotic listening test. Once again, we have a symbol here, H1, which simply denotes that this is the alternative hypothesis. Right, now, how will we know if our results support our hypothesis? What we have to do is we're going to have to either accept our null hypothesis and reject our, our alternative hypothesis or kind of the other way around. What we really want to do is to be able to accept our alternative hypothesis because that will tell us that um, we, were, we were correct in our assumptions. We can do this in different ways. We can look at the mean but of course there's problems with the means in terms of outliers. Um, we could use the range which gives us a better idea but then again it's, it, it, it has its disadvantages. What we really need to do is use a statistical test and this is where the Wilcoxon comes in. So what does this mean? Um, this is what we call our level of significance and we're going to use this in order to work out whether or not our scores or our results are really really significant. So basically what this means is that there is no more than a 5% chance that our results are due to something beyond our control. This could be things like the time of day, it could be something like individual differences, it could be experimental bias, it could be that the researcher was in a particularly bad mood that day. So we have to take all these things into account. P merely means probability. So there's a very low probability, 5%, that our results are due to something else, something beyond our control. It's like saying we are 95% sure that our results are accurate. 